Hi there, my name is Dan Bell, and today we're going to talk about creating a custom field using a schedule variance formula that outputs uh, graphical indicators in Project Server, Project Online. The uh, procedure to do this is basically going to be, in this particular case, five steps. We're going to create the field with the formula. Then what we're going to do is map the output of those formulas, which are basically going to be the different conditions to different graphical indicators to represent the status graphically. Then what we're going to do is, is navigate and open up Project Professional and test that the formula is working correctly. Once we determine that it's working correctly, we'll go ahead and publish that project. And then subsequently, we're going to go ahead and add that field to a project center view to confirm that the graphical indicator is also working correctly out in Project Web App. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the formula that we're going to be using today. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about formulas, but let's just briefly talk about this one. Um, the first thing this formula does is, is it checks to see if there's a baseline saved. And that's what we check to see. If there's no baseline saved, we have to, to use this value here. If there's not, the formula outputs the text no baseline. Second thing we do, if there is a baseline, we check to see if the percent complete equals zero. If it is zero, we're going to output not started. Once we pass those two tests, then we're going to start using the proj date diff, and we're going to determine um, if the project's late and varying degrees of late. So more than 10 days late, more than three days late, and then finally, it will be on time. All right. So that's the formula. Pretty straightforward, and there are just really so many different types of formulas and so many different types of checks. This is a very simple one um, that we've seen many customers use. Let's go ahead and create that field. Go to server settings in our project online environment. We'll create enterprise custom fields and lookup tables. Now I am going to create two custom fields here. And the reason for this is because I want to be able to test the formula. I want to see the output graphically. Therefore, I'm going to create one that doesn't have any mapping to graphical indicators. All right? So we're going to just save this one as is. Then we're going to create a second, as so, same thing formula. And then we're going to go ahead and create the graphical indicators here. And I believe I need approximately four or five here. And we're going to check for equals on each one of these. I believe I need one more. And then uh, the values. So we're going to start from beginning to end, right? No baseline, uh, not started, and then more than 10 days late. I have to pay particular uh, attention to getting everything right with these, right? And then on time. And even, even the, uh, the case has to be correct. If there's no baseline, I want to output a gray dash. If it's not started, meaning if a task hasn't started yet, I want a white circle. More than 10 days late, red circle, more than three, yellow. And then finally, the good old green circle if a task is on time. And then let's say, and, and of course, I wanted to point out this, right? Entity of project type because it's describing a project and then ta a text type because the output, no baseline and the other items, is actually an output of type text. Let's go ahead and save that. All right, formula's done for now. Let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Project. And we launch Microsoft Project. Let's open a blank one. I'm going to bring my details view here. And uh, what I'm going to do is add a resource. We'll bring Garth. I happen to be logged in as Garth. And we'll assign Garth. Actually, let's create a task for us. We're just going to create one. I'm not too concerned with uh, this, the structure of this project. We'll assign them to 40 hours. We'll click OK to make sure that assignment takes place. OK, great. Now, I want to make sure I'm on a, a particular view in Gantt chart. And the reason I want that one is for a couple of reasons. I added percent complete and baseline finish because I need those for testing. Let's add our two fields, project get status. And then we'll add the other one, which remember, we put it in for testing purposes in order to test the output. Remember. No baseline saved, baseline NA. We wanted a gray dash. Gray dash means that we actually have the text outputting of no baseline. So far, so good. 
Remember, that's the first one. That trumps all. Even if we have a percent complete, it should still have a dash with no baseline because that's the first condition. If I save a baseline, set, remember what happens then, it's not started. That's because percent complete equals zero. All right. The next thing is, well, what happens next? Percent complete, progress it. Ah, it's on time. You can see the text output of on time. On time equates to a green graphical indicator. The reason it's on time is because it's less than three days late, right? In this particular case, it's zero days late. Now let's go ahead and, and make it late. Now, proj date diff, the formula, takes into consideration the calendar being used for the project. Now I could have specified a specific calendar in the formula. I didn't since I didn't use this as the one that's specified in the project. Uh, three days late, one, two, three, go ahead and specify that date. Now if you look, we're more than three days late in this particular case, it equates to the yellow. Great. Next is the 10 days late, right? So we need another three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it looks like we're gonna have to go about here somewhere. And there it is, more than 10 days late, red schedule indicator. Looks good, working successfully to me. Let's publish this project, and we're gonna call it graphic test, hit save. We should get prompted to save a site. We're not gonna save one in this case. Click publish. And um, what I'm going to do now is go back out to Project Web App. And while that publish is taking place, I'm going to manage views because remember what I said, I'm going to add that field to a view. I took the liberty of creating a view already. I, I merely copied the summary view. Highlight the view, click the copy button up here. Just gave it a different name. Click on the name of the view, opens it for editing. In this particular case, remember, we want proj, project schedule status. There it is. Click add. We're going to move it up to uh, just to the right of project name. There it is. Let's save it. All right. New view is all set. And let's go ahead and see. Is that view set? There it is. Int summary test graphical. Move that over. There are the project names. There is my field. Remember, I, I said I put it to the immediate right of the project name. The reason it's not populated for all these projects is because every single one of them has to be opened, calculated, and published in order for the schedule status formula to work and display a graphical indicator. However, it works for our ZZZ graphic test project, and that's really all we were looking for to do in this particular case. There you go. That is how to utilize a schedule formula that outputs to a graphical indicator in Project Web App. And so we followed those steps. We created the custom field with the formula to determine schedule variance based on the baseline to the working finish. We mapped those conditions to the graphical indicator. We tested that output in Project Professional. We subsequently published that test project. And then finally, we created and deployed a Project Center view to confirm that the graphical indicators worked in both Project Professional as well as in Project Center. And it worked just fine. Thanks for watching the video. Now, notice that um, if you have any other questions that you'd like to ask about either this video or maybe request other videos, uh, please go ahead and contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Ask at Intigent.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.